Hello everyone, welcome back to Geek Disorders web series over HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, and jQuery. This is Lavic. I'll be going through this series with you. Alright, I uh, just wanted to make a quick little video over uh, a few other HTML5 semantic elements. These are lesser used. Uh, there are others that, that are out there, but uh, these are going to be the more used of the lesser used. <laughs> not quite, they're not used as much as like your section and uh, the header and nav and stuff like that. But they, they do have they are used um, and the ones we're going to cover is the time element uh, it's an inline element and it is used to display dates and times um, we, the next two are both block elements and they are the figure and then the fig caption um, we are going to look at one attribute and it is for the time element and it's going to be the date time attribute alright well the first thing we need to do is uh, go ahead and open up a notepad plus plus here uh, if you have a new window uh, you want you want to go to save as. If you don't, you want to create a new window, and then go to save as. And I'm going to save this on my desktop. And I'm just going to save this as HTML5 uh, HTML. And there we go. All right, let's go ahead and set up a basic HTML5 web page here. We'll start out with our doc type. All right. Oop. I cannot type today. There we go. All right, now I'm going to open up my HTML and I'm going to insert the language attribute and set that to English. Then I'm going to close my HTML. I told you I couldn't type. All right, next I'm going to open up my header or head element. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and then I'm going to open up my body element, and I'm going to close that. All right, I'm going to go back up in my head element and I'm going to add a couple of elements to it. First one is going to be a meta element. And then I'm going to set a character set attribute uh, equal to utf-8. Alright, I'm going to close that. The next one is going to be a title, and I'm just going to call this HTML5 uh, semant oh, manic elements. Alright, and then we'll close my title here. Alright, now I'm going to work in the body of the web page, and this is where I'm going to uh, kind of show you all the different uh, elements we're going to work with today. Uh, we'll start off with the figure uh, element. Alright, and it just looks like this right here. Remember this is a block element. And so what goes in the figure element? Oops. And there we go. Alright, inside the figure element uh, you want to put like illustrations, diagrams, photos, um, uh, code listing uh, listings like you know any computer code that you're gonna use with the, the code element um, or anything like that um, and you you want to put this in the figure like if showing a figure on a web page it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of set off indented and then below it you can have your fig caption and you can kind of caption that figure so we're gonna just put some code in here and I'm just gonna put a variable and I'm gonna Call it um, oh, just test equals five. All right, and we'll go ahead and close this code element. All right, and then underneath, I'm gonna create. Oh, actually, I'll just show you what this does first, and I'm gonna create some just kind of garbage here to kind of show you that it is a block element. Save that and run it. Okay, here's the garbage, and you notice it is in its own block. Uh, and it's kind of indented and it's uh, in a different uh, font. So that right there is the figure element and it's meant to be used go ahead and delete that. It's meant to be used with the fig caption element and I just caption. I can just say this is my caption and then close it. There we go. And we'll save and run this and you say this is my caption alright and so that that is the fig uh, fig caption and the figure uh, elements and that's about how the, how they're to be used now inside here you know you can put like a diagram or a picture anything you wanted to kind of kind of indent and show as a figure on your web page and then caption it alright and Next, we're going to look at the time uh, element, and this is 
an element that kind of has a standard to it, and I will link uh, kind of like a the, the official standard on how to format uh, times if you want to look uh, look at it more in depth. But I'm just going to cover it briefly. So all the time element is remember this is an inline element is that right there? Uh, it does have a attribute that goes with it, and the attribute is the date time attribute. Okay. And like if I wanted to do May twentieth, two thousand thirteen, and let's say I wanted it to use the Pacific Standard Time, and the Pacific Standard Time was let's see, uh, one p.m. There we go. That's what that's that's what I want the date to be set at. This right here, the content of your time element what goes between the opening and closing is that is totally up to you you can format that any way you want I can abbreviate however I want that to be displayed I can set it up but what you put in this date time uh, attribute and you would you would create this attribute if you needed to set a standard like if something uh, a screen reader you wanted to be accessible or if JavaScript was going to use this, something was going to grab this date time and it needed to know exactly how to read it and you had no control over it. Well, this is what the date time attributes for. It has a set standard on how you display it. it to display May 20th, 2013, 1pm Pacific time, you do it this way. First you start off with your uh, year, it's 2013, dash and May is the fifth month, so it's zero five, and then we're talking about the twentieth uh, day, so we'll put two zero. Okay, that is how you set up the the month, day, and year. You separate the time value. You don't have to display time if you just want to display May twentieth, two thousand thirteen. If that's all you want it to relay, uh, if that's the important part, then this right here will work. Uh, if you want to put time with it, you separate it with a T. Okay and 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There's tons of different time zones. Some places use time zones, some places don't. So, you know, if some other place is going to try to read your time, it needs to be in a uniformed format so it knows what it's looking at. It knows what time it is compared to your time. And there's a uh, uh, time called UTC. It's like the, it's, it's like the coordinated uh, uh, time between uh, around the world and UTC to Pacific Standard Time Pacific Standard Time is eight hours behind UTC now we can there's two ways to do this we can put our time which is 1 p.m. and in order to do this you have gotta use 24 hour time so military time and 1 p.m. is 1300 hours so you put 1300 hours just like that and you need to tell it that this is in uh, Pacific Standard Time. I would put negative zero six oops, colon zero zero, and that tells it that this time is six hours behind the UTC. Or if I wanted to move this up to the UTC, which is since that's thirteen hundred hours here, six uh, it's negative six. I'm gonna add six to it. All right, and that'll be nineteen hundred hours. Uh, if you want to display it in UTC, you just put 1900, and then you tell it this is UTC by putting a Z right behind it. Okay, it's kind of confusing, and as I said, if you want to look this up, I will provide a link um, to the actual uh, standard for this, uh, so you can kind of do a little bit more research if you want to, and kind of uh, get used to uh, setting this up. All right, well, those are the uh, the the three elements I wanted to show you, and the one attribute. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, video. And if you do enjoy our content from Geek Disorder, please subscribe uh, to our channel. Uh, it'll actually help us a lot. And we will actually see you all next time. You all have a great day.